recorded has started. Um, welcome to the pre-ITF 114 uh, IoT Directorate meeting. So our agenda, we are going to provide an overview of the ITF and RTF working groups and research groups. And then uh, if uh, people is interested to, to give an update of other IoT work like IoT Security Foundation, etc. And then uh, we would like to know from you, how do you think we can facilitate to have the input of other IoT SDOs into the ITF? Okay, uh, so starting with the ITF and, okay, some comments on the agenda? No, thank you. So we start with the ITF, RTF, IoT groups. So 60-ish, Pascal or Thomas present? Nope. Uh, so I think this group is kind of the work done and only is open just in case to finish the, the open documents. So six low, Carles and Sueta cannot attend, but they have provided an update. As you can see, we will not read. Then ASE, Daniel Logan Alden, or someone else that can provide an update? No, okay. Um, Anima, Sheng or Terles, or someone else? Okay, seems not the case. Um, SDF, Michael Niklas, or someone that is familiar with this work? Okay, since the people is in vacation already. <laughs> Seabor, Barry, Christian. Okay, not inputs. Um, core, Jaime, Marco, please. Yeah, this is Marco. Yes. Um, so we published three RFCs uh, in the latest months, and one was the resource directory that took a while to complete, but it was worth it. Uh, another one was blockwise transfer for co-op for robust transmission, uh, serving especially the dots uh, use case, and finally, CNML data content format. Uh, indication that uh, other than uh, its main contribution, it provides also useful terminology about content type, content format, um, and so on to refer to. And one more document was also approved for publication, one of the core conf documents, uh, Young Seabor. Uh, well, another one of those um, is in ISG evaluation um, right now, together with uh, the problem details document that, that I'll um, take uh, in a second more in detail. Um, we have additional working group documents, a few in advanced state, meaning Shepard Red Apple working group plus call and two recently adopted uh, instead. The transport indication for co-op uh, to allow servers to signal support for multiple transports and an informational document, uh, document on attacks uh, on co-op. Um, so most of the work actually during this month was on the problem details document. It was dormant for a while, uh, but then around April, um, it became a urgent thing for uh, 3GPP that is aiming to release a spec uh, now in June and had problem details as a dependency, basically. So, so that meant a lot of uh, hard and focused work on that. And now it's in ISG evaluation. Um, other work happened on the well, uh, HREF and CORAL uh, pair of documents, some group communication for co-op, uh, also with security, with group OSCORE, and other related topics um, about keying for OSCORE. Uh, yeah, we've had regular meetings as interim meetings and design team meetings for HREF um, and CORAL, and we'll meet um, in Philadelphia or online for ITF 114 for a two-hour session. Otherwise, we'll resume interim meetings also uh, after summer. That should be all I had. Okay, great. Thank you very much, uh, Carles. Uh, uh, Marco, uh, sorry, uh, some questions or comments? Okay. Uh, Kose, Matt, or Ivailo, or someone else that want to provide an update on Kose? No? Okay. Detnet, uh, Low, Janos? Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm speaking. Uh, I guess the main thing I would uh, draw attention to is uh, the update or extension of the charter uh, to add uh, enhanced uh, data plane solutions 
to address uh, recently raised requirements. And um, we have also updated the, the, the milestones. Uh, I gave the links uh, to the uh, hashdog. Uh, the updated charter or draft charter is pending approval uh, scheduled for the next uh, telechat. Um, also, I could mention that uh, we are heading towards a working group last call uh, with the OAM framework uh, draft and some working group adoption has been requested for some of the drafts uh, like packet ordering function, which is individual. We don't know how it will go. And uh, also after the charter update, if it happens, uh, we expect uh, to go for ask for working group adoption on these new recent requirements. Uh, I guess that's it in brief. Okay, thank you very much, Janos. Comment or questions? Okay. Um, question. Um, just a quick question, uh, Janos. Um, I probably missed it. So this group, uh, DECnet, is meeting uh, for the um, IETF. In July. Yes, we have uh, submitted an agenda request and we hope to, to be on the agenda. Uh, okay. We will see on Friday, I guess. Um, one more quick question. Maybe it's not directly related to the status, but uh, might be also interesting for others. Uh, I uh, just saw today um, in another meeting with uh, OPC EUA. Um, so they are running on top of DeadNet, um, but they are saying that they don't always require TSN. Um, do you um, do you understand? Um, you know, I'm I wasn't quite under able to understand why they don't need TSN, but they could work with JetNet. Do you have any expansion? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I may try to give a, a bit of a shed of a light on this. So we uh, we said in the beginning, and when, when forming the Debt Networking Group and when, when we kept to, to this uh, principle, that um, the two groups, uh, Debt Networking Group and the ITPLA 2.1 TSN task group, work together on to develop common architecture. This is spelled out in, in the DATNET charter, but uh, uh, the intention is uh, to develop these two technologies such that they can work independently of each other as well. So so when it comes to wireline technologies, TSN is, uh, is the primary subnet technology for DATNET, mm -hmm. but DATNET is specified in a way that uh, it works without TSN. Okay. So it, it's it's up to some it's up to the actual deployer or the owner's choice uh, which way to go, and uh, actually it is somewhat related to this uh, charter update as well because uh, uh, the DeathNet bounded latency uh, document uh, what we have uh, currently which is which is heading to its publication. <laughs> Uh, focuses on on this uh, on the TSN queuing techniques, which are actually made available without TSN subnet. So if you you can use it, in, implement it in a router too. And okay. uh, some DeathNet contributors considered that further queuing mechanisms would be useful to be defined in DeathNet. Mm -hmm. um, this is one reason for the extension of the charter. Okay, yeah, thanks for the clarification. Because, um, I was always thinking that DeadNet runs on top of this and um, that's one option. Technology, yeah, that's one option. Okay, okay. all right, thanks. Okay, great, thank you very much. Some additional comments or com uh, questions or comments. Okay, IoT Ops, Alexei, Henk uh, advised that he's in business trip, so cannot attend. Someone can update on IoT Ops. Okay. Lake, Melissa, Stephen. Yeah, so this is Malisha speaking. Yes. Uh, so the Lake, as a reminder, standardizes a, a lightweight key exchange protocol. Our adopted solution document ad hoc has been frozen in the time frame from uh, November 
last year until mid-May, uh, waiting for the formal analysis from the academic community. Uh, we have received first analysis comments and uh, presented those during the ITF 113 meeting. Uh, right now, we are still we are kind of uh, updating documents, so the document uh, has been uh, re re revisited, and some changes have been introduced into the document into, into the latest version of the document. So at ITF 114, we will be having a one hour session where we will be again going through the changes or the latest changes on ad hoc as well as the new comments that we expect to receive by then from the formal analysis community. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Melissa. Uh, some uh, comment or questions? Okay, thank you. Elwick, Mohit, Sen. Okay, someone can provide an uh, update on this? Okay. I cannot provide a full update on, on the group, but uh, the working group adoption call for 7228BIS just ended. Um, the, the chairs haven't declared victory on that uh, yet. So if, if you want to comment on the working group adoption of 7228BIS, uh, that would still be uh, quite uh, helpful, and of course the intention is to to um, extend the terminology that that we fixed in 2014 um, to the the much wider gamut of of IoT devices that we are currently uh, uh, looking uh, at. Uh, so we have new entries in the list of of classes, but we also have very uh, different ways of categorizing systems that maybe. Um, already have turned out to be useful in, in discussions um, about uh, various applications, use cases, uh, requirements, uh, documents. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Carsten. Some comments or, or questions? Okay. Thank you. LP1, Alex, Pascal. Well, uh, Alex and Pascal aren't there, but I can provide mm -hmm. some information if you want, or maybe yes. Eric can as well. Um, okay, so one piece of work that is uh, nearing completion is the Young Data Model it, uh, for for SHIC, for the Header Compression and Fragmentation Protocol. It's been submitted to ASG. Um, another piece of work is uh, an extension to the SHIC protocol regarding fragmentation and the, the way we use acknowledgements to do selective retransmissions of uh, fragments. And so a new format uh, has been introduced to be able to group uh, several acts together, um, save a little bit of overhead. This was uh, originally a suggestion by uh, those of us uh, wanting to implement SIG over SIGFOX, and we figured that piece was generic enough to be used for other uh, underlying technologies. So it was split into a separate draft, and this one is also nearing completion but in the working group. I'm not too sure. Is it working group last call? Not yet. Um, and then we have uh, two uh, profiles uh, to describe how SHIC is used over uh, SIGFOX and NVIOT, namely. And the, the one over SIGFOX, uh, sorry, no, that's it. Um, and then new, new work being introduced is uh, a discussion on whether we need an IP protocol number for SHIC, uh, since SHIC is a is a compression technology can, that can be used at different layers. Um, it might make sense to have a protocol number. Uh, so far, we had my view had been that Chic was only used on point-to-point -point links, and so the links would know that they're using Chic. But it might seem reasonable that you want to multiplex uh various protocols some using shake some others not using shake or use shake at different layers and well the this is a discussion that is just starting okay great thank you very much dominique i don't know if eric wants to 
fix some of my <laughs> mistakes. No, 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 no. Uh, good summary, Dominic. Uh, I, I'm just surprised with this IP protocol. I did not notice this, but it does make sense as you wrote, as you said. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, Rats, Kathleen, Nancy, Ned, or someone can provide an update. Okay, Ro, Rick, Yves. Sorry, I was struggling to find the, the mute yeah. button. <laughs> um, I put some text in there. The the um, suit recharter ha, uh, has finished, which will allow us to address uh, MUD uh, as part of manifest. And the manifest document is going to be broken up into several, a base document that has uh, got all the mandatory features, and then options um, are going to be grouped into clusters that are needed for various features. Uh, that work is underway. Uh, it was basically an outcome of a working group last call. So uh, hopefully we'll see that sorted and uh, and be the primary discussion at IETF 114. Great. Uh, you mean the sweet working group, right? Sorry, that's what I meant. <laughs> is that, yes, that what okay. I said? <laughs> yeah, thank okay. you. Yep. Okay, uh, Roll. Um, okay, we are going to have an interim meeting on 27 June, next Monday. Uh, we have requested one hour for the ITF 114. We have DAO projection in working group last call. We request uh, reviewers and feedback. So please, if you are willing to do it, let, let us know. How oh, Debbie Ripple have a new version and its feedback for the working group. Um, we have in progress enrollment priority and the R and FD. And then we have as well addressing feedback from the ISG and what is an NCI extension. Um, comment or questions? Okay. Do you want to mention yeah. the potential joint meeting with uh, money? In ah, the yes, that's, that's good. Yes, we probably will have a joint meeting with the MANET and um, I think Anima as well. Uh, on a multicast. So if you're interested uh, on joining that meeting, well, uh, we don't know yet uh, when will happen, but uh, we hope to have in the ITF on one four. We will keep the working group posted so you can join and, and uh, participate in the meeting. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much, Dominic. Okay, sweet. Uh, was, if, yeah. If yes. you want, uh, I can give it a try to roll in lack of better candidate <laughs> <laughs> no no uh so, sorry i didn't understand what you said in the row working group like evie and rick are not on the call neither pascal if you want i can try to give a short update ah oh, yes please on row yes please so the the working group is making progress the first uh, document that is becoming uh, rfc is the ldex the aeronautics uh, uh, document and uh, the one is getting towards there the next one is the use cases uh, which will be followed by the technologies uh, so practically speaking these are these are done uh, and um, there are two interim meetings uh, have been scheduled uh, before ietf 114 uh, to work on and develop further the, the raw architecture draft, the, the big piece. I guess this is what I would highlight. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Janos. Um, okay, we go to Tip, uh, Tiru, Nancy. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, no, sorry yeah, to interrupt yeah. you. Uh, yeah, no, you said that LDAX it's making progress, but it was discussed at the IEG evaluation, right? Or is it another document? In my understanding, uh, yeah, the status is that it was at the ISG. It is at ISG evolution, uh, evolution. and um, AD follow-up is the next step. So I, 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 I don't know how it went, but I think uh, as far as I understand, it's getting, uh, that's what I heard from Eve, that it's getting going well. Uh, okay, uh, as far as I know, there is a way forward uh, with this document. 
changing a few things. Uh, but if we go forward, but I mean, the, the point is currently is blocked, right? So there are mm -hmm. yes. four discussions, including one of mine. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, uh, my, my discussion is, is basically around the IPv6 part and, and will be solved easily uh, with the authors. Uh, but it's not a piece of cake to move it this forward, though, right? But the, we have a way forward. But mm -hmm. it will not be simple. I see. I, I see. I, okay. Thank you, Janos. I, I, I would be happy to understand what is the main uh, uh, issue. But uh, thank you for thank you for pointing this out. I see now the red flags. And um, honestly, from my view, it was not as straightforward to have this work at, at IETF at all at the first place. Uh, and that's basically you know, the, the, the main reason. Uh, it's, I mean, I, I like aeronautics, right? So I, I like the draft, uh, the, the content itself, but it's basically a kind of a roadmap for future standards that will mm -hmm. be specified outside of the IATF. Mm -hmm. So we don't really see the usefulness of it to do it at the IATF. Mm -hmm. That's basically it, if I remember correctly, because it was a couple of months ago. Thank you. Thank you. And happy to continue the discussion later, of course. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Janos and Vic. Um, okay. Tip, Tiru, Nancy, or someone that can provide an, an update. Okay. RTF, Coin, Jeffrey, Eve. Marie Jose, or someone that can provide an update. Okay, team to team reach a group, Karsten, or Ari, but Ari, I think is known. Yeah, I'm Carol looking to, to Ari's uh, notes here. Um, so we, we are uh, keeping up our um, habit of not meeting at the IETF uh, meetings, at least for this time, but uh, we'll have a summary meeting after the IETF meeting which may be a little bit surprising, but we have more, found that more people are on vacation now than they are, as we can see from, from the people being here as well. More people are being on vacation right now than there will be after the ITF, so we might have an August uh, summary uh, uh, meeting. Uh, we completed the research group last call on the IoT Edge challenge and functions document, so this, this is a a rather useful report if, if you are trying to understand what what the discussion is in the IoT Edge uh, environment and the, the authors are doing finishes finish uh, finishing touches. Um, the uh, guidance document against uh, uh, the guidance on RESTful design document again is, is uh, such a report and is uh, being updated to address uh, comments from from my review. And uh, maybe looking forward, we had some some pretty exploratory discussions about digital twins and IETF IoT technologies. Uh, there's of course other digital twin work uh, at the IETF, in particular in the network management research group, uh, which are looking at digital twins as a um, paradigm for for managing uh, uh, networks. And of course, they, they have been popular in the IoT space. So we are currently uh, looking at what IETF technologies are applicable there and uh, uh, whether there, there are any gaps that uh, we would have uh, to uh, fill. And uh, we are also acting a little bit like the, the research arm of the ASDF uh, working group looking at, at information model um, uh, standards and uh, one important activity here is to have a landscape because there are so many of these um, trying to understand what what these do what the underlying technologies are so we, we kind of are trying to um, develop an attrition label system for information modeling uh, standards so you know whether there's proteins in there or actually sugar or carbon, carbohydrates, uh, uh, and so on. So this is a pretty early activity, but I think it, it's pretty interesting if you are interested in uh, modeling uh, devices. Okay, great, excellent. Thank you very much, Karsten. Comment, questions? Okay. 
So about now, new plan RTF, RTF, IoT activities. Do you, are, do you are aware of some, like IoT Security Foundation? But I think Michael is not in. Um, okay. If someone does not have, so an update and other IoT work, well, that's this. And then uh, an, an update as well in our uh, joint meeting with IIC. Uh, we are still organizing it. Uh, it's taking time, but we want to find a structure that uh, both sides are happy with. So yeah, we are still in the organization phase. We are going to continue the meetings after summer. So probably for the next PITF, we have more information on it. And then uh, we would like to know your input. Uh, how can we facilitate to have uh, either IoT SDOs into the ITF? What do you think? Okay, in a case that uh, you don't have comments, uh, you anyway can write into the mailing list, state then your view. So uh, if there is no other comments, we can finalize the I, meeting. I have a, uh, forgotten to bring up one thing uh, with uh, new IETF activities. Yes. Um, th there was a buff uh, called SKIT, Supply Chain Integrity Transparency something. Um, which is uh, looking at the, the larger uh, problem of uh, making sure that, that digital items and, and also other items that you might have in your supply chain um, actually are uh, described in, in a, a transparent uh, way. So th this is really a, a very big uh, subject. Uh, but uh, what, what's going on right now is that, that uh, three or four um, aspects are being identified that are actually worth um, discussing here. And of course, one, one is uh, how do you actually um, standardize uh, transparent uh, uh, signed statements about items without standardizing the underlying ledger or whatever mechanism you, you are uh, doing that. So how, how do you do this at an object security level so you can actually extract the statement and, and it still have it third party verifiable. So th that's one um, issue that is coming up, uh, but the discussion is still ongoing. Uh, we had um, a non-working group forming BOF as an interim and we plan to have a, a working group forming BOF at uh, IETF uh, 114 uh, based on the discussions that are now running uh, about the questions that were identified um, at the BOF. So the mailing list is SCITT skit. Um, yeah, thank you, Hannes. Um, th th there's a link to the uh, meeting in the chat. Um, so um, yeah, we, we're going to have that, that working group forming BOF uh, at IETF uh, 114, this is all a little bit um, on on the fast track uh, because uh, th th there are reasons why you want to work on supply chain uh, integrity and transparency uh, at, at this point in time, including an, a U.S. executive order. Um, and uh, so th this has a lot of attention in the industry and uh, the, the IETF should find out what, what it should be doing in this uh, space. Very well, excellent. Thank you very much, Karsten. And um, um, okay, some comments, some further comments or questions. Okay, so I think uh, we can finalize the meeting. Uh, thank you very much to everyone. I will stop the recording and post it. Uh, I think we'll take uh, one or two days to post it into YouTube.